Welcome to our service today. Oh, it's such a wonderful time that God is allowing us to be able to have today. Let us stand and give God our praise and our worship and give it all to Him. Amen? Amen. Good morning. What a mighty God we serve. <clears throat> What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we He's always mighty. Doesn't matter how down I am. He's high and he's lifted up. And he's with us today. Isn't that wonderful? You're welcome to clap. He's going to open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's going to open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And you will not have the room to receive it. Oh yes, he's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And you will not have the room to receive it. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Falling down on me. Oh, I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel it falling down on me. It's the former and the latter rain together. And I'm not talking about the weather. Well, it's the Holy Ghost rain and it's falling down on me. Oh, yes. The rain. I feel it falling down on me. Oh, I feel the rain. 
I feel the rain, I feel it falling down on me. It's the former and the latter rain together. And I'm not talking about the weather. It's the Holy Ghost rain and it's falling down on me. Oh yes, he's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. He's gonna open, open up the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing. He's gonna open. the Lord knows what we need or cares what we need. If our hairs have a number and he knows what we're going to think before we think, don't you think he cares a little bit? Well, today you're coming at the right time because the Lord's right here and he's got some things to say to us. So just keep on worshiping the Lord. This next song that we're singing is from Isaiah 6. And when you have time, please read this. It was the year that Uzziah died, and Isaiah had a vision. I saw the Lord. was clothed in glory, exalted high, and the train of his throne filled the
everybody sing with me on the first verse. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen.
such a privilege to be able to stand before you today. To have the honor to be able to come and ask for today's offerings and tithes. Today is Mission Sunday. Brother Jack is coming. And I think he has something special for us today. But if you allow me, let me pray. And if you will, bring the offering and everything this morning together. And then we'll be able to hear a good word from Brother Jack. Lord, we come to you today thanking you already. In advance for what you've already done. In advance for what you're going to do. For God, we always understand that if we're true to you, oh, you will multiply beyond measure. We ask, Lord, that today everything would be according to you. According to how you would have it to be. We ask for your blessing in that precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you will, please bring it forward. Submissions. to you, morning to you, good morning to you. One of the folks that give a little money now and then to our missionary outreach, he felt an obligation that he wanted to do something for the church other than just give a little money. So uh, I want to present to you what he did for us. And if uh, y'all come on out, Eddie. He wanted to present this flag to our church for what we do in Israel. This flag was made in Israel. And uh, if, pastor, if pastor chooses to put it on the side wall somewhere, uh, that's fine. And I thank you guys for doing that. And I thank you for all your offerings. Y'all can go. Uh, a month ago, I had a message, and I wasn't allowed to bring it forth because on Thursday, right before Sunday, I got very uh, sick, and I couldn't speak. But today, I want to share two small messages because I want to make up for the one I missed. You know, I want to call these messages current events, and you will get the drift of this in a few minutes. Uh, last Sunday, we were definitely humiliated by our president who wouldn't recognize Easter or Resurrection Day. He decided he would go elsewhere with sin. And this past week, uh, I think God let them know on that East Coast that he's in charge. Two shakings of one of the largest cities in America. And not only did it shake New York, but it went all the way to Maine all throughout the East Coast. And I want to share what God put in my heart to give to us today. And I will start by a saying, you can listen, it's gonna be scripture based, every last word of it, and I'm gonna do it as fast as I can because I know pastor's got a message. First of all, I'd like to uh, speak from the book of Zechariah, 
and I'm going to start in chapter 12, and I'm going to read verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to surround all the surrounding people, and if they lay siege against Judah or Jerusalem, and it shall happen in that day that I will, will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone around all people. All people, our president has decided that, you know, we're going to cut off some funds to Israel. He better be careful because George Bush Sr. cut off $50 billion worth of funds from Israel when he was the president. Three days later, there was a little hurricane called Andrew, and it was 220 miles off the coast of Florida. Well, it went straight into Florida and did $60 billion worth of damage. So I, if any of the advisors to the president hearing this, they might want to take note of that. I'm going to flip over to chapter 14 in Zechariah. I'm just going to read a couple verses. I'm going to start at verse 2. For I will gather all nations, that includes America, all nations, to the battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken. Now I'm going to jump down to verse number 3. For the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations, and he will fight in the day of the battle, and in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. I don't know, James and you and Peggy might have went to the Mount of Olives. But he's going to split the Mount of Olives in half. He's going to move the east to the west, the north and the south. The reason why? So that the people can make their way to Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives is up above Jerusalem. It's the highest spot in Israel, other than the Golden Heights. He also is going to move the mountains to the south and the north to a little town. It's called Azel. Azel is no longer in Israel. But when Alexander the Great ran in, Israel, ruled over that area, that was a small town. It was right at the entrance to Jerusalem. Now, we're sitting there, we're in the fast current event here. Now, this message that I got on the next chapter, I want to share this. This is out of the book of Psalms, and uh, it's so awesome. I got to get this thing just right the way I want it. Too many glasses. This is for the one world. In the book of Psalms, chapter 2. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? A vain thing. You see, they so ate up with themselves that they want to be vain and they want to rule the world. The king of the earth sets themselves and the rulers Take counsel together against the Lord. You think our president might be being uh, led by some of these rulers of the earth? But I got some bad news for them. The Lord says in verse 4, he says, I am the Lord. I hold them in derision, derision. You know what that is? That's a word. A French word, I looked up the de definition, and it says that it is ridicule, and he says that he sits on the throne, and he will laugh at them. And he says that he's given the whole earth to his son, and his son will rule and reign over this entire world. Now, I got a little message right here for these global warmers. Uh, in Psalms 46, 6, the Lord says, The nations rise against the kingdom, but the Lord 
with his voice will melt the earth. That's some bad news. All these global warmers are crying out, oh, we got to save the earth. Well, God said he's going to melt it. I didn't say it. He said it in his word. Psalms 46, 6. Now, my message for this Sunday, <laughs> let me get to it. It's really good word, very good word. You'll find this word. Paul wrote these words. Therefore, having this, let me give the scripture. It's Romans 5, verse 1 to about number 3. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace through and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Through also, we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I want to. I got something. You know why you go through trials and tribulations? Because it's very simple. We have to go through these trials and tribulations. God's purifying us. He's coming back for a pure church. He wants a church without spot or wrinkle. But we know we live in this flesh body and that we have to have Jesus Christ interceding for us to make us pure so that we will have an obligation to reach out to a community that is sickly and hurting, families broken, families just torn up throughout the whole world, not only in America. But I want to share this. This is a really good word, the reason why you go through those trials and tribulations. I'm going to read one verse in chapter 8 of Romans. For I consider that the suffering, sufferings of this present time or age are not worthy to be compared with the glory which, the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the expectations of the creation from the Lord waits. God is wanting to bless us. He wants us to be anointed and share his love with a hurt and dying world. This morning, one of my customers was, uh, she worked in, in George uh, W. Bush's uh, government. You know, she said, oh, George W. is a very good man, very good people. And uh, she said, she didn't like his dad because his dad was a one worlder. Isn't that something? She worked for the son, but she didn't work, uh, enjoy the father. And uh, I just believe that God's going to move by his spirit. I'm praying every day. And when I come in this church, a lot of times in the morning, I have two relatives that are very sick with cancer. But one thing the Lord has directed me to do, and if you go to a board meeting, a lot of times you can't make the meeting, you get to vote by proxy. So I anoint myself with the oil and I ask the Lord that I'm standing in the presence of him, but I want to be anointed for my niece and for my cousin. Both of them have uh, terminal cancer supposedly, but I'm believing that by his stripes they will be healed for the glory of God, not for no man. And God's going to glorify his son. He said he would in these last days, and he's going to do it. And I thank you for your time.
Today I face a mountain that I have no strength to climb. You see, the struggle of this journey's left me weak, both in body and in mind. Where I stand to the peak is a distance on my own I cannot breathe. So this journey of a thousand steps begins right here on my knees. Soon I'll soar like an eagle. Once look like a mountain, just a hill from heaven's point of view. I may face things tomorrow I can't comprehend today. Circumstances so uncertain find it hard. To find the strength to pray But I'm living in His promise He'll always see you He will always see you through So was this mountain to an eagle Flying high from heaven's point of view Soon I'll soar like an eagle High on wings of grace Far into the heavens Where I can almost see God's face Rising in His splendor to heights I never knew What once looked like a mountain's just a hill From heaven's point of view What once looked like a mountain's just a hill from heaven's point of view. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, ladies, and the words of the song are so true. The Lord sees things different than I do. It's not because he's up higher. Because he's not just up fire, he's everywhere. He's omnipotent, and he just knows, and he sees, and he cares, and what a compassionate God we serve. He loves us. He does. A couple of announcements. Uh, in the morning, to the men folks, we're beginning our men's breakfast again at 8 o'clock in the morning, right here in the Fellowship Hall. Guys, if it's where you're available, it's more than just a chat chat. And it's more than just a good meal. And it is that. But it's a time of fellowship. And it's a time that we get to express our heart and hear what somebody else is going to say that could be a word for me as I listen 
and then being together. So that's tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, here at the Church Fellowship Hall. Um, I'd like to ask you to do something, make an adjustment. These are our prayer cards. We've had some uh, changes and different people and what have you. So we're going to ask you to bring your prayer card back with you next Sunday, if you will. And we're going to put them in the box. And we're going to set them up here. And uh, for a season, we're going to pray over them collectively as a church family. So make a note, if you will, bring your prayer cards with you next Sunday. Uh, Jeanette, if you'll put that well, in the bulletin anyway, but we'll put it out uh, so you'll have it. And then to the ladies, now uh, they're beginning, they're cranking back up their ladies' sessions this coming Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a reintroductory session, but I hold in my hand a notebook, but on the inside of this notebook, uh, wrong one, Inside of this notebook is um, a book that I put together, a study guide several years ago. And uh, the ladies are going to begin, um, next Saturday they're going to have an introduction of how it works. It's a very unique uh, work and they will explain all of that. You'll be uh, awarded or given a, a notebook. And uh, does it come with a cover or they have to get their own cover? No, um, a lot of the women already have their notebooks. They've already started studying. Okay. If you don't have a notebook, it's a three-ring binder what you'll need. And uh, this is the contents that, that the Lord helped me put together. And it covers a lot of things. And I think it will be very beneficial because it's come from our, our uh, uh, location. It comes from my heart from the Word of God, and uh, so uh, we'll be talking more about that. So next Saturday, you, you that come will be issued, if you don't already have one, a booklet that has to do with the basic Bible studies uh, that the ladies will be uh, enjoying and participating in. And uh, Brother Gazzo, I want to thank you for your tremendous uh, presentation today. Uh, you lifted my spirit as well. You were very positive about the things of God. And uh, it was just so, uh, so I'm so grateful about that. And that beautiful flag, we'll figure out uh, where to put it. Uh, whoever it was uh, that was so kind and thoughtful to get that flag all the way from Israel right over here and donate it to us. We certainly want to uh, use it wisely and for a good thing. Oh, and everybody said, Amen. 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 It's good to see you today. Thank you for coming. We do have a lot of sickness. Let's pray right now. Father, there are those that need a touch in their body. And they'd much rather be here, but they're dealing with issues that, that need your attention. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, those that are not well, not able to be with us, and they're struggling with various situations, in Jesus' name we speak the Word of God for healing, for encouragement, for deliverance, for help. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. All righty, thank you. Well... Do we live in perilous times or what? I was listening to Brother Jack reminding us of what our president is doing. I don't think it's just that he's messed up in the head. I think he's messed up in the heart. Amen. Amen. Uh, no national emphasis put on last Sunday, being Resurrection Sunday, but it was put on the alphabet. You figure all that out. And now here we are trying to tell Israel how to run their business. My Bible said, touch not mine anointed. And our president feels pretty brave right now. It seemed as though by telling, if you don't do it our way, well, we'll... Uh, will make you regret it, or whatever that means. 
But we live in a, a critical t- time uh, where we wonder what in the world is taking place in our, in our country. Well, right now, right now we hear talk about the eclipse on Monday. We've heard talk about the earthquakes in New York City. It's been over, what, 250 years, so the news said, since there was an earthquake in New York City. The last one was a 5.3, and this one was a 4.8 250 years ago. I don't know if it was just a, a, the Lord ringing a bell and say, I'm trying to get your attention. You know, the Lord's not, uh, f- he, he's not so um, disgusted, is that a word I want to use? As he is, I'm, I'm thinking, disappointed last Sunday. The world, the religious world, celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And why? Because it offers us hope from sin. The sinful nature was given uh, a help. And last Sunday, a week ago, and I'm, I'm wondering about the mindset of uh, mankind today. Uh, Someone reminded me, and it's been on the news, I saw it on TV stations, one of the largest denominational churches on the Mississippi Gulf Coast is having a a celebration coming up real soon. Did I get that right? And what are they doing? Debbie, you want to tell us what they're doing? And not Jesus Rock. A rock concert to get people to come out to church. But first of all, we're not going to do that. Second, I don't know how much it would cost to get a rock band in here. And thirdly, we ain't paying it. Fourthly, we ought to be ashamed. We need to get on our faces and our knees and cry out to God. I don't know... I don't know what God is going to do as far as um, the, the move of his hand to get mankind to realize you need to put the brakes on your lifestyle and get serious about be, being ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. I don't know how people cannot see, uh, don't recognize the signs are everywhere. All right. I'm going to approach the word today from a, a different perspective. And I hope you'll hear me. It's a different approach for me. But I was crying out to God. I said, God, I got stacks of notes of sermons And we could just preach them over and over because they're true. But Lord, we need that freshness also that goes with the Word of God today. The relevance. And despite the fact that all around us there's despair. Woe is me. Is the plight of man today. What am I going to do? Um, And it's not necessarily so much the lack of means, of funds and stuff. I said this, uh, I believe it was Brother Wise coming out from back there. I said, I notice we go out to eat sometime. And let's say for an example, a couple, uh, a man and his wife and two children, maybe a young teenager, teenager, they all come in as a family and they sit together. They don't talk. They get their cell phones out. And they get busy. I don't know what to do. I don't know who they're talking to. I don't have that many friends to take the phone with me everywhere I go and talk on it. It'd take me about two minutes and I'd run out of names of friends on my phone. And I'm thinking about 
family life. What kind of life is that? They don't communicate. Do they even know, oh, that's my daddy, or who is that guy? It's really desperate times in so many circles. But I'm not going to leave you hanging with that mentality today. Because I really do believe I was quickened by the, a voice of God. Whether it was audible, I don't stand here as some great guy. Oh, God talks to him and he tells us all this. Well, he talks to me, but I don't hear his voice out loud a lot. And uh, in my crying out to God, Lord, what do I need to do? What is my place? What is your leading? What is my right now role in life? Turn to 1 Peter with me, chapter 4. And there's a couple of words in this one verse. Verse 12. I'm going to read verse 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Peter 4. But in verse number 12, there are two words in particular that I'm going to uh, use. Beloved or beloved, think it not strange. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Did you get that? Fiery trials that are good for us. As though some strange thing happened to you. I went through a, tr a tough time, had a fiery trial. That's not fair. That's not supposed to be. But Peter writes, sometimes strange things happen to us. And that's what I want to talk about. Strange things. Next verse, 13, 1 Peter 4. He talked about fiery trials that really can get you down. And I think if I asked for a show of hands, everybody would, if they were honest, they'd say, yes, I've been down. I've had to look up to see the bottom. I've gone through some tough times. I've wept. I've hurt. I've struggled. I've been in an emotional strait on many occasions. But Peter writes here, he said, now concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, and we don't always understand what's going on, what's happening. Peter says, we look at, at it as some strange thing is happening to me. Strange. Nobody else has been through that before. Well, I probably can uh, disagree with you on that one. Strange things. But instead of trying to figure out why you're being, you're hurting, or you're going through a storm, or you're struggling in a financial way, or whatever way it is, instead of saying, this is not right, it's a fiery trial, but we leave out some words like, which is to try you or to prepare me. And they look so strange, Peter says. But he said, what we need to do is to rejoice. Can we say that word together? Rejoice. In so much. In other words, the reason is that you are partakers of Christ's suffering. We just dealt with that last week. Spear in the side, beaten on the back, and nails and cross that we would be partakers of Christ's suffering, 
that when his glory shall be revealed. Maybe you're saying, what in the world? God's glory. Now, some feel that it only refers to the rapture. I'm of a different position uh, in some parts. But when his, the Lord's glory, shall be revealed. There's some things I don't know. I don't understand. I wish I had a better insight. But right now I don't. But Peter writes, the time is coming when God's glory is going to be revealed. Ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. The time is coming when God's glory is going to be revealed. The glory having to do with God's purpose, but not just why He let me go through a, a fiery trial, but it's going to make sense. The glory, that's a beautiful thing. The glory of God will bring a revelation. Amen. When your his glory is revealed, you may be glad. You may be glad with exceeding joy. How long has it been since you've been exceeding glad because of the, something that God has done in your life. Verse 14. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Oh, they, they've been picking on me because I'm a Christian. They've been laughing at me and all that kind of stuff. Well, the Bible said, if that should happen when you're reproached for the Lord, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory, or here's the word of glory again. Now in the next verse it's saying, the spirit of glory and of God resteth, E-T-H, upon you. I stand here right now, and you sit here with me, and you're watching wherever you are. I want to tell you today, according to the, the scripture, the spirit of glory is with you. And when the right time is, uh, comes, some things are going to be revealed. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Now the next three verses, uh, yeah, the next three readings... One's going to be from Isaiah 2 and 2. You want to turn there or you can just watch it on the screen. And then I'm going to go to Micah 4 and 1. And they're going to be identical. Let's read Isaiah 2 and 2. It shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And ye shall be exalted like the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Let's read Micah 4 and 1. If you want to keep your thumb on Isaiah 2 and 2. Here we go. In the last days, but it, in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. Hundreds of years of time. And the word of God comes again to two different people and says the same thing. There's coming a day, a time, and it's going to be in the last days. 
This is the day that we live in now. Do we understand, folks? We live in the last days as far as the church world is concerned. And twice, Isaiah 2, Micah 2, it says the same thing. That the mountain of the house of the Lord, that high place, shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now, Peggy and I did have the privilege to go to Israel. And we got as close as we could get on the top of the mountain where the Dome of the Rock, the Mosque of Omar, it's called officially, it's the place of worship for idolatry or for none worship of Jesus Christ. It's sitting on a holy place. But the Jews believe they have a right to it. And so as we took pictures, we have our own personal pictures, and you've seen pictures of the Dome of the Rock, that massive, beautiful uh, religious building on the top of the mountain. But it's in the way. And I do believe that these two verses have uh, more than one message. I believe it does reference the reconstruction of the temple that was destroyed in 70 AD by Titus of Rome. And the temple itself has no rock, no stones left at the base of the courtyards and the outer courts is what we call the Wailing Wall where thousands upon thousands of people visit in tears, putting their hands and crying out to God. Whether we believe, you may be smarter than I, whether you believe that this is a reference simply to the rebuilding of the, of the temple of God, and I do personally believe, and I have scripture, but I do believe the time is coming when there is going to be a new temple constructed on the top of the mountain where the people of God come, where the Jews come and worship. It's not so right now. I've heard some strong tales about a building that's already pre-constructed in storage, ready to be deposited on that location, but there's got to be a moving of a building. And you know the conflict right now that's taking place. And so whether this has to do uh, only with the reconstruction of the temple I don't believe so, but if you do so, we're not going to be in a spirit of disagreement. But it says that the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow through it. I'm sure that the world will recognize in due time what's happening because it is going to happen. Let's look at Acts 2. It shall come to pass, verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last days. Here's that reference again. Saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men see visions. Old men dream dreams. On my servants, on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. I will shew wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire 
and vapor of smoke. Without trying to drag you into some philosophy of mine, I'm just saying to you what what is uh, stirring me deep is we believe the outpour of God's Spirit on all flesh is happening now. We talked about it in the adult class this morning in Sunday school about thousands meeting here in Mississippi and Alabama and other places. It's not on national news anymore. But they're meeting in college campuses and they're praying and they're crying out to God and they're worshiping God. The Bible says that's going to happen. And it is happening. But notice what it says. During this outpouring, during this move of God, it says there will be wonders in the heaven above. Signs in the earth beneath. Sound like earthquake a little bit. Blood. A few months ago, Israeli families were at a park outside of Israel. Just enjoying a day off. And suddenly... Homemade helicopters appeared out of nowhere and landed around them. And out of those man-made machines came masked soldiers in uniform with swords and with guns. And they attacked those Israeli people, hundreds of them, while they were just having a day off. And with swords in hand, they came from all around that crowd. And while others watched with those swords, they literally beheaded people on sight. The Bible said there'd be signs in the heavens. Well, I don't know if tomorrow has anything to do with it or not. But a lot of folks are looking up. Signs in the earth beneath. We had them just this week. And then the beheading and they captured, they took hostage of some of them and they still are being held hostage. Fire and vapors of smoke. Go over to Israel right now. And go to the Golan Heights and see what sight you see. Fire and vapor of smoke. Second Timothy 3. I don't want to bore you. I just have this in, in my heart. I need to share it with you. Then you do with it whatever. Second Timothy 3.1. This know also. What does it say? You need to know it. Okay? This know also. In other words, there's some stuff that we need to make sure we already know. But in addition to what we know, the writer to the... uh, To Timothy, the second letter to Timothy was Paul. He said, Timothy, in the last days, perilous times will come. Not might, nor let's have a vote as whether we believe it or not, shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Parents, don't tell your kids what to do anymore. They'll put you in jail. Unthankful, unholy. The lifestyle today is beyond our imagination in the past. Three years ago. And then let's go back six years ago. 
the way people were living, it's happened, the changes is so fast, without natural affection. Homosexuality is what that means. Well, pastor, you better just be quiet. The Bible's not quiet. Amen. Without natural affection, truth breakers. Don't come into agreement with people. They'll, they'll sell you out in a second. They'll betray you. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. They're people that hate you because of what you believe and who you are. Traitors, high-headed, uh, high-minded. Don't tell them anything. They know more than God does. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. More than lovers of God. I wonder how many people that, that cry out, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. They're more interested in having their lifestyle than being dedicated to helping souls. And I asked this question Wednesday night. What's the, the purpose of the church? To build big, nice buildings with huge chandeliers and stained glass and have all kind of pomp and circumstances. And No, the purpose of the church is a four-letter word. S-O-U-L. Everybody say it. Soul. Soul. And Paul said they have a form of godliness. Now they bring rock bands to their services. That don't even sing songs about Jesus. That's happening now on Mississippi Gulf Coast. Denying the power thereof. From such, run over and get you a ticket. Stand in a long line. From such, they'll have a longer line getting tickets than we had getting in here today. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, lead captive silly women laid with sins, led away with divers lusts. I'm going to tell you, lust is on every corner. Ever learning. They know it all. Ever learning. But never able to come to the knowledge of what? Truth. And sec back to Second Peter he, in chapter 3. He said knowing this. Second Peter 3 and 3. Knowing this. First, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. They'll be bold, and they are. They are bold. And saying, where's the promise? Y'all talk about the promise that Jesus coming back, a rapture and all this stuff. We wish it hurt him, get rid of all of y'all so we could have a little peace of mind. Where's the promise of you coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, we've heard all this. For this, they willingly are ignorant of it. It's a choice to be ignorant. Joshua said to Israel as they were settling down in the promised land, choose you this day who you will serve. And the writer here says they choose to be ignorant. For this they willingly are ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water, whereby the world that was then was overflowed. Do we believe that there was a flood that washed away God's original creation? But the heavens and the earth which are now that was then, but now, let's look at now. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Everybody say fire. We read about the flood, it was awful. 
But he said, there is now in reserve a fire. It's in reserve against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. We can do our thing if we want to. We can live our lives like the flesh wants to. But there's a fire in reserve that's waiting for people who do not serve God. Verse number nine, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years. That means God's not set to a time clock, a calendar, a watch. He knows he has a plan, but he's not slack concerning his promises. All right, I want to get to where I can, I want to wrap up here. And maybe somebody just said, thank God he's about through with that. I didn't create the that. I didn't create the sinful nature. I was born into sin and shaped in iniquity, but I found an, an escape called Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful today. I'm not standing here trying to be ugly or judgmental, but the Word of God is still number one seller and it's been around for how long? There's no excuse for people not reading it. They read all kind of junk. So now I'm just putting it out there to wherever it goes to remind people we need Jesus. And the thing that quickened my heart for today it was those two words that I read to you when I started reading earlier in Second, Second Peter. He said, although some strange things happened unto you. Let me talk about just a minute. We don't have long. We had company yesterday in our home. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're watching the service today. They visited with us about three or four weeks ago on a Sunday morning. Toward the end of that service, we hadn't had an official introduction, didn't know them, they were guests here. And we stood and the wind of the Spirit just moved in here and great conviction, the presence of God. And at a, a, a glorious moment, at that part of the service, the Spirit moved upon this brother. His name is Brother Blair, Brother and Sister Blair. And the Lord used him in the gift of the Spirit and we got an interpretation of it that day. Neither of those that was used had any idea of what a threat what happened that Sunday was to the demons of hell. Because he who gave the message and he who was given the spirit of interpreting the message. Both were attacked that day severely. And I'm not talking about way young. I'm talking about just recently. And the brother Blair found himself critically ill beginning the next day. In the hospital, they did major surgery, opening his chest up from here down and removing parts of his intestines and discovering that he had serious things going on. That Sunday before they came in his life, there was no perception, no awareness, no thought that there was anything 
while I'm talking and I'm wrapping up here in a moment, you're going to be thinking with me about some strange things. Brother and Sister Blair came to our house yesterday. We had a good time. We had fellowship. We played music together. She was going to sing a song today, Sister Blair. She's a musician herself, plays the keyboard. We thought that was an exciting thing, didn't we? So they played the keyboard and they sang and talked about songs and, and she was on the, the list, the schedule for today, and it's laying right there, the schedule for today. We were looking forward to them being back finally after being here and going through such a, a difficult time. So they were getting going to get up this morning and come. Guess what? Before they could get up to get ready to get out here again, they've come under attack again on a Sunday. You say, well, that's just a happenstance. No, sir. No, sir. Not when it comes to the life of a believer. The enemy don't like you and me if we're going to give ourselves to be used of the Lord. So the Blairs are watching if he's able to from their home. And I thought, strange thing. A baby was found floating down a river in a basket. And somebody heard a baby's cry. They said, what is that I hear? A baby crying? This is the Red Sea. and There's alligators and snakes and and they got to looking around and they found a little basket floating. And in the basket was a baby. It was a strange thing, wasn't it? But little did they know, the deliverer of Israel from Egypt through God was in that basket. Hand me that basket over there, baby, if you will. In that basket. Floating down the river. Was a baby. That by divine appointment. God was going to use. To deliver. Up to three million people. From bondage. And at this moment, I'm going to stop and say that somebody is either in this house in person or you're watching somewhere. And the Lord has put in my heart to say, you may feel really insignificant. You know you love God. But it seems like there's turmoil every time you try to pray or try to get really into being used of God or doing something beyond the norm. You come under major attack and it may not be physical or it may be the voice of God spoken to my heart to say, tell them it's a strange thing, but good things are just about to happen. A nothing, a basket floating down the river contained the deliverer of a nation. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I want you to hear it with your heart. Not just your head, but with your heart. The Lord is saying, it might seem like a strange thing right now. But the Lord said, I'm in preparation. I'm in process of raising up another strange thing. You can look at me. They, they left Egypt. 
They cross the Jordan. Now what? I want to tell you, the spirit of worry and fret is not of God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. There's some things I cannot understand. I cannot figure them out. So now here they are. Okay, we have, we're no longer in Egypt. We're out here in the wilderness. What are we going to do? What are we going to eat? They woke up that next morning and the ground is covered like snow with manna. Enough food for every one of them for the whole day. A strange thing. It's on the ground. All they had to do was step out and pick it up. And the Lord would say, it's time to step out and say, here I am, Lord. My hands are open. And then they got thirsty. And the barrels of water had already about run out. Here's Moses. God, what are we going to do? The Lord said, take you the rod. Hit the staff. I don't suggest. But if you feel an anointing. And you want to disconnect. From your city water. And run your pipe into a rock somewhere in the yard. And every day go out there and hit it. Go for it. Strange things happen. Amen. And then as they moved across the desert. They were thirsty again. There were no rocks to talk to. No rocks to hit. Now what are we going to do? I want to tell you, it does not matter how bad things look. God has the answer. So somebody said, I see a well up there. And more than somebody started out running. Oh, there's water. Hey, I see it. They got there. It's just one little well. Hardly big enough for one family or so. But when they got there, they wanted to see if they could be the first to get the bucket full of water and pull it out. They looked over and there was no water. It was dry. The well was dry. There are times I've gone through a dry spell, spiritually speaking. What do you do? Well, something that my wife does all the time. The Lord, the word of the Lord came to them and said, sing to the well. There it is. There's a well. It's a hole in the ground. There's a bucket, but there's no water. What do you do? You do a strange thing. You do stupid stuff where people are looking at you, taking videos and say, I'm going to put this on TV and let you see this dummy. They sang to a dry well. And then somebody heard a blah, 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 I guess. And they looked and they said, you know what? Water is coming up in the bottom of this well. Sometimes the last thing you may feel like doing is to sing. You feel like moaning and groaning. Woe is me. But then in their crises, they sang unto God and said, Lord, we need a miracle. And a strange thing happened. It filled up. With enough water, one well, enough water to feed all their animals and them and their stuff. There was a man that, was, that died and they buried him. Four days later, 
that was a knock on their door. And when they opened the door, there was a familiar face. And immediately, they began to accuse. And they said, if you would have been here, this would not have happened. Sometimes the Lord allows us to go through a difficult time so that we can learn to lean on Him. Take me to where you've laid him. They took him outside of town, perhaps, or down the street. And he said, roll a stone away. And they were upset. Now, you're going to add insult to injury. The Lord has a, a unique sense of humor, doesn't he? Roll a stone away. He's been in there four days. They knew that the odor would be so repulsive. They talked about that. But Jesus opened his mouth at a time of death and heartbeat and brokenness. And he spoke the name of the negative situation. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. You know the rest of the story. It was a strange thing. There stood his sister's is that Lazarus? It was Lazarus. He was still wrapped up in grave clothes, and the Lord said, clean him up. But when they got all that done, they could hug him and kiss him and bring him home and get caught up on our thing. What goes on in four days in a grave? Strange things. What am I talking about? I'm telling you that the Spirit of God, if you can't trust me, if there's no way that you can find a place to reach out in your heart and faith with me in this time in which we live and agree, the Bible said, if two or more will agree touching anything, it will be established. I'm telling you, I brought you to this place to tell you, and I got a, a long list of other strange things that's happened. Can we agree that in this day of chaos, and churches emptying out, Preachers throwing in the towel by the hundreds every month and walking away. And more and more challenges from the government against the church. I want to tell you, the Lord said, tell them, get ready for some strange things. Because I've got some things to show you at the right time. And one of those things that I saw in my heart was me saying, I need you to move over, make room for somebody to sit there. Do I have an agreer? That was a little weak. Do I have an agreer? Would you stand with me? Strange things. Some of you are going to experience such a visitation from God in regard to your health. There's going to come some strange means that God is going to use to promote you at your work. Some of you are going to see your children come under conviction and stirred by God to get hungry and want to come to church and cry out to God. Some of you are going to witness the miraculous of God helping families to redeem, to redeem husband and wife relationships in the proper order of God. Father, I've given them what you 
quicken my heart and mind. And I know that it in itself is strange. We're at a critical point today as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy feels like as he did that day when you went into the heart of the earth during the time of your burial. He feels like he's ready to rejoice again. But I thank you for your word of God. You said you're going to pour out your spirit. You're going to show your glory. You're going to manifest your power. And in D'Iberville Christian Assembly, we love you. We love you as a group. And I ask you, Lord, to strengthen our faith for us to have expectations from you of unusual, strange visitations from God. In Jesus' name. If they'll play the music softly now for a moment. Would you just bow your head right where you're standing? How do you feel about what I've said? Has this, has this meant anything at all? Has it got your attention? You may not have agreed with every thought, everything. But we're in this together, folks. Jesus is about to come and he's ready. He's got fire in reserve for those that say no, that don't live right. He knows he keeps record of my life every day. And if I'm not doing right, he knows. And there's a fire reserved for me. But he said, I have greater things. The great thing would be a outpour of God, the revival fires. Jesus, thank you. And I know it's a little past 12 and I don't usually do this, so I'm not, I haven't taken advantage of your purpose. But could I ask you before you go, if you'd walk down here with me and stand for just a moment and let's agree that God is not done and he has some things he's going to do soon. In your lives and in mine and in our church. Come on down with a, with a song in your heart. A dry well, but with a song. Do you hear a baby crying? Reach out and say, I'm going to make myself available for whatever reason. And say, here I am, Jesus. And I know that I stand here today in the presence of people who sense, as I do, the glory that's going to be revealed. Yes, it will be partly in the rapture, but I believe there's some glory that's ready to be revealed before the rapture. And Second Peter, or Peter said in Second Peter, God said, get your house in order. He will reveal some glory. Jesus, here we stand today. And we're hungry for you. Lord, this is not just religious talk. We're hungry. We're desperately hungry. We realize Satan has run rampant in the world. But you've quickened our minds and our hearts to say, to stay faithful. And I know the flesh is weak and there's a lot of challenges and temptation, but I pray for the strength of God to us, in us. And so I pray today that we agree that though it's a difficult time and it looks bad, strange things are right out there within our reach. Good things for the kingdom and the glory that will impact souls that it looks like they're so far gone, they're so hardened, we'll never be able to reach them. Nothing will work. But the Word of God said, all things are possible. Keep believing. Keep believing. 
You may not have two coins to rub together to make a sound, but God will supply your financial needs. Your faithfulness will follow you to work and show up and get in the face of those in charge and say, this, promote this one. Give an increase here. Give authority here and to your families and to mine. It's been a very difficult last many, many months for Peggy and I and my family. It looked like there was no hope. But I want to tell you today, the Lord is in the process of renewing and restoring. It's still in process, but I can see the hand of it. I can see the bubbling at the bottom of that well in the middle of nowhere. Bubble, 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 bubble. It's going gonna, it's gonna to rise. You receive anything today in your heart that the Lord quickened in your heart. As you close your eyes with me. Jesus, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what's going on in our hearts, but we thank you for your word. We leave here now. Help us to put our best foot forward and do our best to come and celebrate every service, encourage each other every time possible, and be a part of seeing the phenomenon of God's glory revealed in our lives souls coming to God that's our main objective is seeing souls led to God through our testimony through our invitation through our lifestyle through our prayers and the drawing of the spirit you said if I be lifted up I will draw all men and Lord I pray that we lift you up with our faithfulness and our heart So now, we leave. And I praise you today for these great people. And may, though the enemy is going to try his best to steal what they heard and twist it and laugh at it, I pray that we'll hold dearly to the Word of God and observe and witness and experience God's glory. Look at me. I want you to repeat after me. In Jesus' name. name, I decree decree my faith faith in God's glory glory, to me, me, my family, my my church, church, and my community. community. Amen. Amen. I'm done. (laughs) Okay, hold on just a moment. Listen up. I was standing back there. This message, strange thing. Thursday, I picked up the gym. He looked like he was in shambles. He talked. He knew the Lord. He knew a pastor that I knew from Florida. His name, his gentleman's name, was John Paul. His fare was $5. I never did charge him for the $5. Because he said to me, he says, I want to do a good deed for you. Strange things. I went right to the grocery store. He said, go in and pick out anything you want. So I was very conservative. I, I picked out some stuff. It was a hundred and some dollars. The next morning, he called me again. He said, hey, let's go to that grocery store. He said, pick out anything you want. I mean, we were conservative. And we, we got blessed with almost $400 worth of groceries that time. Strange things. I made only $45 that day in my cab. That's the smallest amount I ever made in 31 years of driving a cab. But I went home with an abundance of strange things. <laughs> Somebody touched me back there on that aisle when Debbie was in the restroom. I felt a squeeze on my shoulder, and I felt that I should share that. Thank you. Hey, folks, do you receive it today?
to receive it today. Walk out of here. It, it may not be a grocery opportunity, but it's God's glory, and that's what's important. He knows what we need. God bless you. Thank you, Jack. That's beautiful. Amen. I'm going to go get me a taxi so they can buy me some groceries.